What's up guys, it's Jason from Fife Drones and I'm putting out this video, uh, educational video I guess, um, of footage that I captured yesterday from my um, GoPro helmet cam and the drone itself of an emergency landing that I was forced to, to conduct um, during a fairly routine uh, flight. Uh, the flight was to put the drone up to 400 feet. Uh, which it achieved and then the the plan was to rotate the camera 360 degrees capture the the 4k footage and bring it back down um, whilst at 400 feet uh, maybe about 10 seconds into the camera's rotation uh, something went badly wrong um, the camera flipped out and I pretty much lost control of the drone um, or rather partially lost control of the dr drone although at one point I did think I had lost full control of the drone um, I, once I realised that I had control or partial control uh, and enough to to maybe control the the, the drone and uh, and bring it down, um, I made the decision that I was going to ditch it uh, for safety reasons. But thankfully, when I did actually get it down low enough, um, I realised I had enough control to uh, to do an emergency landing. Um, I did mention that it was in a congested area. Um, the area itself was, uh, I had the full, I had way more than 50 meters clearance in, in all direction. Um, and the drone itself is under seven kilos, so it complies with the Civil Aviation Authority's uh, regulations with regards to unmanned aerial flights in congested areas. Um, in terms of hazards, the there was a large flock of seagulls um, kind of grazing, if that's what you call, is that, if that's what seagulls do, um, to the right of me, but I, my risk assessment, I had uh, determined that they would only be pose a risk um, during the takeoff and landing phase, and I was more than happy to monitor their um, monitor them during those two phases to make sure none were in flight and none were coming in my my direction. Of course, the landing phase was uh, unplanned, uh, so it was a kind of case of improv improvising as much as possible. Um, I did carry a full checklist prior to takeoff. Um, I do have a very robust um, checklist, um, but there is one item on that checklist that I have since um, altered s after yesterday, um, and I'll explain a wee bit more about that at the end of the video, where I will reveal what caused this um, this nightmare scenario. Um, particularly useful if you're an S900 pilot or uh, an S1000 pilot with a Wo Wukong. Although I do think that the um, the A2 have the same sort of setup. Um, so anyway, enough of me blabbing. I'll let you see what happened and I will commentate throughout the, the video um, so that you so that you know what's going on at each stage. Enjoy. So no problems with takeoff. Just looking for stable flight before I bring the landing gear up. Happy with stable flight. Just making sure we've still got good stable flight in GPS mode. And once I'm happy with stable flight, it's uh, it's time for the climb. So keeping an eye on those seagulls. Constant checks between the drone and the FPV, checking altitude. I'll take it forward a little bit just so I can still see it. I don't have to break my neck looking for it. Just in position slightly. And we're almost up at 400 feet now. Now the video is going to jump forward um, a few minutes. Um, once it's at 400 feet, I start the uh, get the camera positioned correctly and start it doing its. Uh, 360 degree pan and that's where things start to get a little bit crazy so here it comes now uh, no, 
So that's the point where I noticed on the FPV that the display, the camera just completely flipped, did something very strange, and I can see by looking up that the, the drone is moving around the sky um, quite quickly. And I don't have control of it. It's, this is doing this on its own. At this point, the old uh, adrenaline starts to kick in, and I realise I've got some problems. And pretty much as soon as I take my hands off the stick, um, it's it starts to just move off quickly in, in one direction or the other. Uh, so at this point, I'm just trying to bring it down as quickly, uh, and I am now in the in my head thinking I'm going to have to ditch this. moving forward to the side just doing all sorts of crazy things and, and I, I really am controlling this what I'm doing is I'm fighting with the control so I'm trying to compensate for its movements this was probably the scariest moment because it, it was flying so fast backwards towards me, full throttle um, forward to, to bring it to, to a stop and at this point I'm starting to think that I have enough control to to bring it down safely but it's still very hard to control Speed was probably the hardest thing to control because it, you would you would take your um, you would release the throttle just slightly and it would uh, it would start to move rapidly in one direction. And there it is, just a constant battle with the controls to to try and keep it stable. I can also see from here that the, the camera, which I flicked into reset mode, should now be facing forward, but it's not, it's facing to the right. I did check when it was up there that it wasn't in, that I hadn't knocked it into uh, manual mode. I double checked, it was still in GPS mode on the controller. At this point I'm realising that it's too difficult to bring the drone to me so I'm now moving towards it. And at this point I'm still thinking it's going to end in disaster, but thankfully, as you can see, with a little bump, that's it down on the ground and a massive sigh of relief. So here we are with the footage from the drone itself. Uh, this is when everything was going well. The nice slow 360 panoramic uh, video capture. And any second now... It just goes mental. And here we go. Now when I saw that in the FPV, I genuinely thought I was going to look up to see the drone falling out of the sky or doing just doing some sort of mad spin thing. Um, and this is a point in the ground video where I'm now trying to establish whether I have control over it or not. Uh, I thought I had no control over it at this point. My main priority was to move it away from the the houses uh, and then when I realized that I was able to kind of partially control it um, it was at that point where ditching it started to enter my head and that's never a good thing for a, a, a drone pilot especially when you've got like a, a few grand's worth of kit up in the air uh, it's kind of your last resort but when you've got people and uh, houses around then sometimes it's your your only only option
So the camera at this point is still doing silly things. This isn't the drone that's moving, this is actually the camera that's rotating and then it sits in that position which is what I pointed out on the uh, on the GoPro, on the head helmet cam. Doesn't look quite as uh, as scary with the the gimbal keeping things nice and smooth. Landing gear down. Rather, that's the landing gear down. And all the while here I'm just trying to get the drone into a position where I can just slam it down, which is here. So down with a thump. So what caused that? Well, once I got the, the drone down, I did notice that the LED on the back um, was completely dead. Even after power cycling it, um, there was no life to the LED at all. Um, once I got the drone back to the workshop, um, I started looking at different things. To I actually thought it was going to be a problem with the Wukong. Um, I thought maybe something had caused it to flip into manual mode. Um, but it turned out to be something much more simpler than that. Basically, the two connections that... Um, that you can see here in the diagram uh, that connect into the Wukong had had managed to come loose. Now I have no idea how they managed to come loose, whether it was through vibration of just general flight, uh, whether it was through transportation, whether they've been snagged, I have no idea. Um, one of the things that's on my checklist is to check the cables and it's something I do on, before every flight. Um, I go around and I check the cables. Um, on this particular flight I checked the cables but I guess I must have got into the habit of just visually checking the, the cables on the Wukong. They both look to be in. Um, Obviously that wasn't the case and, and that is pretty much what caused the, 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 the drama that I had. Um, so hopefully uh, you'll learn from this guys if you do have an S900 or a, uh, a 1000. Um, the advice that was given to me was to hot glue those um, connections in so that they just cannot come out at all. Um, certainly something I'll be checking. Uh, anyway, I hope you have learned from this guys and safe flying.